Hey everyone, this is Scrap Computer here. In the video, I'm going to cover what top laner you should play if you find yourself in the role and don't normally mean it. These champions will be useful even when behind and have usually basically in matchups and laning phases. And overall, they're either hard to shut down, scale well, or just have safety. I'll get into each champion and why they're effective. Let's get into it. Trugath. This guy seems to be in all of my pet guides. First up, his passive is unbelievably powerful throughout the laning phase. Chugath is very forgiving to bad trades or simply getting slapped on. Every time he kills a minion, he will regenerate HP and mana. This can allow him to stay in lane for longer than other lanes, well, more than other lanes possibly could be capable of. If behind, this is also invaluable to ensure he can stay in lane at a relatively high HP. His Q and W provide a lot of fertility from behind or ahead. A knock-up slow and an AoE sounds can be a huge disruption tool, pick tool, peel tool, and of course this doesn't need any gold to be effective. Trugat's ultimate can be used as a true damage execute tool which has very powerful base damage even from when behind. In addition this ultimate if used on in lane or in jungle camps to generate feast stacks can give Trugath a crap ton of free HP. This free HP can make him harder to kill in the lane and of course allows him to be down about half an item in terms of heavy defensive stats and still stay in the game with this free HP the ultimate provides. Malvite vs AD when versus a lot of auto attack based champions or basically put a lot of AD enemies, Malvite is a fantastic pick. Let's get into why. Malvite's passive gives him a free shield that equates to about 10% of his maximum HP every 10, 8 and 6 seconds. This alone allows him to fall behind a tiny bit in terms of HP or tank stats. Because of course 10% free HP for nothing. From here, the laning phase is surprisingly powerful. His ability to spam his Q and slowly wilt down his target is next to none. This Q can also be used to get away or of course just to stick to targets. Malvite's W gives him increased armor which goes up to 30% free armor. This again means he can fall behind pretty heavily in terms of tank items and still be nearly unkillable for its duration. This W, uh, his W also gives him auto attacks, an AoE aspect which allows him to deal good damage for a tank and of course lets him push waves. Mal's Vite's E is where the fun begins. This ability lowers an enemy's attack speed up to 50% for 3 seconds. This is a mental utility that uh, can completely shut down an auto attack based composition almost entirely. Even if you're minus 100 and you do this to the AD carry on Bruiser frontline, you're still being very useful. This also has a pretty good base damage and skills with your armor in terms of damage, so for a tank it can do quite a bit. His ultimate again has massive utility, this can be an engage, pick, escape, peel, zone tool, especially that escape if you're losing a lane and uh, you can even get a jungle gank of 3 people coming up top lane, the ultimate can get you away. This ability can be used more importantly to make decent engages you see with openings. This ability uh, knock up is basically going to knock up most of the entire enemy team and is very beneficial for you and your team even from really far behind. Safish laning phase because you're so tanky in your kit. In addition scales welds in base utility regardless of how far he's behind and is very forgiving in terms of hard defensive stats because of his W and passive. A good champion. Maokai. This guy has become a quite a famous top laner for a reason. Maokai's base stats first and foremost are extremely high, this gives him a hard stat advantage all game. It's not much, but it helps. His passive gives him massive sustain in lane. This sustain makes him nearly impossible to push out of lane overall. I can also allow him to make mad, bad trades and come out on top with the sustain in the passive procs. This also gives him a theoretic more HP in fights that allows him to fall behind about a third of a HP item in terms of defensive stats if you proc it even once. Abusing this passive alone makes him powerful if he rushes a rod of ages in lane and late game with the high HP it's borderline unstoppable. Uh, his Q and E can be used as a disruption tool and a lockdown tool for himself and his entire team and start game the base damage in these things is ridiculous. This is just useful from any point in the game. Maokai's W deals percentage HP damage. This base damage on this ability uh, grants him quite a bit of damage overall for a tank and if your enemies are ahead you're actually going to do more damage with this percentage damage. Finally his ultimate is where it's at, it grants himself and his team an amazing 20% damage reduction for a maximum of 10 seconds. This is an amazing amount of utility, this can be used to protect yourself and your team extremely heavily. Even when behind this ultimate can be a game changer. If you put in the passive and your ultimate, you can get behind 2 items, 2 whole items and still be nearly equal to an enemy laner that would have had those items. Overall a lot of base utility, a lot of lockdown. Quite safe learnings phase, overall a very good champion again. Trendemir. 
First and foremost, I do want to mention this is the only pick on the entire list that has got a slight little risk to it. Although he does get a lot of free stats, surprisingly speaking, if you're an okay player, you can play this guy and get away with him and he will stay in the game. But if you're very new to top lane, I don't advise him. And I hate this champion. His passive gives him free crit chance for being just even a little bit low in HP. If you're behind this can help you get that all important crit chance. This means you can get a little bit behind in terms of items for crit chance and still do relatively okay. His Q is also a fantastic uh, tool for keeping him in lane with the free HP and of course giving him some free just stats. The healness ability provides him quite good staying power in lane. This Q also gives him some free AD during the laning phase. Again this allows him to stay behind a little bit, the free AD can just help you get back in there. These free stats also make last hitting, which is very important to a top laner, very easy. His E is a pretty, pretty good free and pretty low cooldown escape assuming you crit you know, once or twice. This can again ensure you survive the lane to some extent. Finally the ultimate gives him the ability to tank up for his team and keep dealing damage for another 5 seconds which no other champion can do besides maybe Kale. Once activated it also gives him a lot of fury ensuring the fury can be used with your Q to get the free AD stats and more theoretic HP because they can't kill you. Overall it gives him a safish laning phase enough anyway and he scales really good late game assuming you just keep farming and he gets tons of free stats with his Q so and passive, so overall it's a decent champion, a little bit risky, tiny bit risky if you're not good versus a ranged opponent, but overall he will scale eventually into the late game and the free stats help this out. Garen. I don't really like this champion, but for a very unexperienced top laner he can be a heavily successful champion with little knowledge or skill required and can remain useful even when behind, which is basically everything I want to cover. His passive gives him free sustain while in lane. This sustain is extremely powerful ensuring you can stay in lane as long as possible. Garen's Q gives him a free silence and movement speed giving him some utility and a tiny bit of sticking potential. Also the damage in this ability is pretty nice even with minimal AD. His W gives him 20% free armor and magic resist passively and when actively uh, you know, activated gives him a defensive shield reducing income and damage by 30% and granting him 30% CC reduction. This means Garen can be a powerful tank with these free stats even when behind. This if time properly can nullify a crap ton of burst damage and generally allow him to get behind by half if not a full item. His E does really powerful good base damage and it's because of this it's generally quite a good disruption tool in team fights to a large degree. For a tank a little damage and disruption goes a long way. Finally at level 6 his ultimate gives him some mentally strong execution powers. At, at max rank it can deal 525 plus 28.57% of his targets missing HP. He can use this to execute almost anyone silly enough to be close to him including bruisers. As a matter of fact the more tanky they are the more damage it deals. This ability skills fantastically all game no matter what. Overall he does decent base damage can be quite powerful uh, tank frontline and generally even can come back into the game and behind with his free defensive stats. Lastly, he also has no resources to manage in the lane phase which is pretty nice overall. Mundo now a full tank that is basically immovable in lane. His passive gives him sustain all game, this includes in lane. And obviously late game this becomes ridiculous, but now for the most important aspect. His Q gives him the ability to CS from half a mile away and if it kills the target, the minion for example, you get the full, yes full cost of the HP refunded. So you can CS for free absolutely free on an extremely low cooldown. Mundo top is basically impossible for the most part to shut down in terms of CS. The Q also does 25% of his target's current HP at max level. No matter how far you are behind, this is insane damage versus any champion in the game. His W gives him CC reduction up to 30% for complete free and it gives him some free damage around himself also. This just makes him very sticky overall. His E grants him the highest AD bonus in the entire game with the ability, if you're low enough, to go up to around 200 free AD. I'm not joking, that you can check that up, it's legit. But in general, if you're about half health, about 150 free AD, which isn't too bad for a full tank. This kind of gives him a lot of damage in a pure tank and it's kind of mental at last hitting as well or trading with a bruiser. The E and Q both together pretty much make him unstoppable. Finally that ultimate gives him massive sustain in lane. Basically once he gets sticks, uh, pushing him out of lane with that ultimate is pretty much impossible and obviously mid to late game you'll not be able to die in teamfights. Overall he's got an unstoppable lane 
and un he's an unstoppable tank, unstoppable scalings, and just basically unstoppable overall in shutting down. I guess Mundo goes where he pleases. Nar, another very strong lane that just scales very hard and is <laughs> extremely difficult to shut down at the best of times. I'll explain the passive with the abilities in terms of what it provides in both aspects, both mini and mega Nar. Nar's Q in mini form gives him the ability to CS from half a mile away on basically a non-existent cooldown, or it's extremely good poke tool. The Q works similar uh, to the mini and mega Nar, but it's just a big boulder you've got to grab. Nars W uh, can be used in mini form to basically harass his enemy heavily with their percentage HP damage every 3 hit. This of course any HP percentage damage scales awesomely regardless. Even if he's really far behind, if someone's building to smash HP against him, this will shred them. In lane, uh, it also can be used to get free mobility to get away or stick to his target. In Mega Norlis can be used to lock down your enemy for a set of the abilities. Again, very good base utility on the Mega Nor. His E can be used to engage or escape or just reposition for your ultimate. Which is important, your ultimate may be used as an AoE lockdown, stun, disruption, disengage tool, or just basically to rack your enemy's faces. He can do this even with a minus 10 score. He also generally is built pure tank, which gives your team a tank no matter what. Overall, a very safe laner, provides percentage damage, has huge amount of disruption, is ranged, just basically he's got almost everything, even a little bit of sustain and lean. Very hard to shut down, even late game he provides so much base, disruption and utility, it's pretty much impossible to stop him. Top laners to avoid, I'm going to be generalizing these into tiers and explaining why the tier of the champion should not be played, let's get into it. Early snowballers, examples are below. Basically, if you don't mean this role, the early pressure of having to get a kill can backfire. If you don't know how the matchup really works very intricately and you don't really play these champion that much, getting a kill on these champions can become extremely difficult. If these champions do not get a kill, they're largely extremely weak later on into the game. They only really l provide damage for the most part if behind these guys won't have enough damage to justify the pick. Just try and avoid these guys. I see a lot of people picking up the rule going, I ain't got a Riven. It's like, look, Riven's a decent champion and all, but you, you do actually, as a matter of fact, as much people laugh at it, you do need a little bit of skill to know when to all in using the minion advantage, dropping in and out of aggro of bushes, knowing the limitations of the auto attack Q, uh, using the auto attack reset in Riven, knowing the range of your stun, knowing to when go back, knowing when you can engage, sensing when the jungler's near. Overall, there is a small amount of skill, including in Rengar and Pantheon and Darius and Rennington, they need to know when to go in, they have to go aggressive, they've got to get those early kills, if they don't, they're done for. Just avoid these guys overall if you do not mean this role. Very weak start gamers. Much like the previous point, if you don't play much top lane, playing a weak laner will not help you. Although these champions skill extremely well and of course aren't too difficult to play, a good top laner will not have a problem abusing your weak start game and kicks your ass out of lane over and over again. Well, and they'll do it so heavily you'll not ever want to play that play again button, you're not going to want to click it. So I uh, try to avoid these guys, I see a lot of people going, I don't play top, I'm going to play Nasus. Although in theory this sounds pretty good, if you're versus a Riven or something that knows what she's even slightly doing, you're going to get your ass kicked so hard, you're going to feel it for the next few years. So generally try to avoid these lanes if you can, although they are actually, I was going to put them on the list, they're too risky. If someone knows how to shut you down, they can backfire pretty heavily. And that's it for the end of the guide, guys. If you like it, like it. Dislike it, dislike it. If you like the content, subscribe. If you don't like the content and feel I've dropped the ball, you can also unsubscribe. I'm totally fair. Besides that, guys, as always, have a great day and best of luck in the rift.